Hey guys, Alex from The Four Week Natural here. I'm back in Melbourne and I've got a blog topic for you today about something that arose from one of the students that I had in my London program. Now, I had a student and he was a kind of a macho Serbian guy. Now, Serbian culture is very very masculine, it's very uh, defensive, it's a, a socially defensive culture. And this student, he exemplified the kind of issue where men don't want to give anything away, show any weaknesses, make any mistakes, but you know, you still obviously want to, you want to meet and pick up women. So I want to do a blog today about the benefits, well the truth is that we connect more through embarrassment the topic of embarrassment than anything else. That you'll get rapport and connect with people not by high consciousness topics and commonalities, but actually from common embarrassments like feeling self-conscious, making a fool of yourself, putting a foot in your mouth, being silly or being immature. So we're here today, obviously talking about cold approach pickup, which is what this channel and Four Week Natural is all about. And if you're a guy and you wanna go and meet a new girl, you wanna go and try to get some rapport with her, you wanna have a conversation, get the conversation started, get the conversation moving, and oftentimes you're trying to get that conversation, uh, get some traction in the conversation based on commonalities, like talking about something together. And this Serbian student from Serbian culture, because in Serbian culture, it's kind of an exaggeration of macho-ness or defensiveness, because of that, he was really unwilling or very defensive against ever looking weak or making a mistake or essentially embarrassing himself like looking silly or looking effeminate or looking like he was kind of dumb on some kind of subject matter and all throughout like the first couple of weeks of the four-week program I got some rollers around here with their their megaphones um, I was wondering why is this guy never getting good traction in the conversations and that's because he was trying to find commonalities with people who he's just meeting brand new off cold approach but he was trying too hard. But because he was tough about it and macho about it and didn't want to make any mistakes about it, the bandwidth of potential subject matter, things to talk about and to connect on, was so small that it was almost impossible to actually get a good connection. So the thing is, if you're trying to connect with somebody based on you know commonalities, similar jobs or where you've traveled or career or um, you know religion, ethnicity, whatever it might be, the odds are, the odds are that you're going to be able to meet somebody who's going to be similar to you. Um, it, it gets lower and lower and lower, okay? And because I saw he was looking for so many like very nuanced commonalities like working and marketing and, and being Serbian, things like that, I thought, what is, how do I actually get rapport and commonality and connect so quickly and so easily with so many people? And I realized that the things that the guys who connect quickest with chicks, the things that they do best is they do embarrass themselves. You embarrass yourself in a way that is universal. So humans universally are bonded, bond through embarrassing yourself. For example, you know, how do you, how do you make really, really good friends with somebody? Usually it's drinking with them because if you drink with somebody, you make mistakes, you get sloppy, you say stupid things, you do stupid things, you make, you know, you show wacky intentions and you basically do things that you know by social conditioning standards um, are a little bit inappropriate a little bit silly you laugh at yourself but because you're sharing the mutual human trait of embarrassment you connect and you open up so think of two different case studies imagine you walk up to a girl and you're quite polite and you're formal and you say hi nice to meet you where you're from what do you do for work not only are you clearly seeking rapport, search for commonalities, and trying to find connection out of thin air, which maybe you will, but the problem with doing it that way is you're going to appear to, you're going to, appear to be trying for rapport in a kind of a, a desperate, searching, needy sort of way. You don't want to do that, obviously. But the guys that I see who are the best, I, I noticed, and I couldn't ever describe it until I saw the, the contrast, like defensive, macho, try for rapport type of modality, the guys who actually get the quickest connection are the ones who roll up and approach kind of sloppy. They might be a bit of a loud mouth or distinctly some of my friends who are the best with girls that I've seen, they'll, go, they'll roll up and they'll do we have a wide angle lens here, they kind of dance around a little bit, 
they do something little, uh, some kind of like uh, a little playful expression, something like that. They use some expressive language, some expressive gestures. Um, they'll use kind of uh, silly language to show that we're, we're about to have a conversation or I'm the kind of person who in a social situation, I'm not serious. And what's the opposite of serious is silly, which is kind of like embarrassing. So some really good examples of that in case studies are um, being romantic, showing passion, feeling like you're foolish, acting foolish, saying that you drank too much, stumbling over yourself, being sloppy, claiming that you've made a mistake or disqualifying yourself. All of those things are human embarrassments that all of us can really, really relate to. You gotta realize that when you're actually having a conversation with a girl, you as the guy doing the, look at these nice boats out here, you as the guy doing the cold approach, you're, you know, you might be searching, you know, you might be a little bit nervous, you might have approach anxiety, but it's nowhere near as much anxiety as the girls that you're talking to. So realize that she's gonna be there, she's gonna be nervous, she's judged by her friends, she's self-conscious of herself, um, and she's also self-conscious of guys she thinks she wants to meet in the bar. But if you go over there and you set up a precedent of informality, deformality, a little bit of sloppiness, a little bit of I'm allowed to make mistakes in this interaction by saying stupid things, laughing at myself, not judging one another, if you set up that precedent, then the conversation can blow wide open really, really quick. The thing with embarrassing yourself or letting yourself make you know, social mistakes or letting yourself be imperfect is it actually takes a kind of a, a ballsiness because you need to be willing to accept judgment or to be judged and both be judged for the positive or judged for the negative. That also, mean, that also means that you need to take social risks and extend yourself and show that you're interested in the girl, willing to get rejected by the girl, willing to make a mistake that some people could turn their back and judge, judge you negatively and reject you. So a lot of guys, you know, you, you play it so safe because you don't want to risk getting judged negatively and rejected by the girl or like she walking away from you. But that is actually the very essence of what creates attraction, okay? So attraction, man to a woman, man and woman attraction happens when the interaction is emotionally charged, right? So if you're going to show passion, show desire, show intent, um, and become emotional towards the girl, which is the idea, you know, if you're trying to pick her up, then you're gonna be making mistakes which she's gonna judge you or test you or, you know, reject you or, you know, kind of brush you off and you're gonna need to be able to deal with that. So the big problem that you're probably making is that you're trying to play it so safe so that you can make the interaction go as long as possible, but there's no embarrassment in that and there's no silliness and there's no fun, right? The way it should look, the way it should work, is that if you are the kind of guy who is a big personality or you know a bigger than normal personality, you're gonna say exaggerated, sarcastic, playfully passionate things, whether you give the girl every right to, to test you and to call you out and to say, you know, to, to, to tee her up, to say things to you like, you're full of shit, you don't know what you're talking about, is that the line that you say to every girl? Uh, you're such a tryhard. You actually want to elicit those kind of tests by being more silly, by being embarrassing. And you know, the girl, as I said from the very beginning, the girl can relate to you because you're showing desire and a need for love and a need for affection and a need for, con and a need for con connection that all of us are like looking for, all of us that, are, that all of us are yearning for. So if you can be the one just to do that, you'll open a connection, but you'll also draw extra tests, which you can beat, which will supercharge the emotions in the interaction, and that will actually drive the game and make your pickups actually work. You see that you need to be ballsy to take that risk, because all of a sudden, you're gonna be under social pressure, your reputation is gonna be at stake, um, you're gonna have that, that real risk of painful, uh, non-acceptance by chicks who you like and friends who might talk about you. But the thing is, that type of personality, that type of trait, somebody who's, you know, fun and socially embarrasses himself, people are having like fights with bikes over here, like dinging their little bells so they don't crash into each other. Might see a punch on. Um, you, you're allowed to be that kind of personality outside of the workspace or outside of the family or outside of, you know, the gym where you know, it is a bar and you are allowed to literally take your tie off, tie it around your neck, tell everybody that you love them. But as long as, as, long as you're doing it in a kind of like, in a way where you own it, in an exaggerated fashion, 
with a lot of love and a lot of win-win thinking, and you're almost a little bit of a social martyr, right? And when I say social martyr, you're willing to embarrass yourself to allow others to embarrass themselves as well. So being a social martyr, right? If you're gonna be the one doing the pickup and you're gonna be the one who's creating interactions out of nothing, you need to be the one to, to create a standard, an open standard of communication where everybody is allowed to make mistakes, be silly, uh, put their foot in their mouth. And if you do that, then the girl's gonna think that she's allowed to you know, share her embarrassments as well. She drinks too much, she likes a guy, um, she feels ha more horny than she should, she's wasted too much money this month, she hates her job, things like that. Things that, you know, her auntie or her mother might judge her for, but they're the kind of like embarrassments that sit with us that we're all trying to deal with on a daily basis. Dissatisfaction with our jobs, unhappy about our body, waste too much money, that kind of stuff. These are the universal commonalities that if you can allude to or talk about or open up with, you could be any kind of guy speaking to any kind of girl from any race, religion, age, socioeconomic status, and you can relate on those things, those things about yourself that you're not happy with, which are just universal traits. And so being a social martyr, if you're the kind of person who can bring that up first and own it, be blase about it and be kind of brave enough to put it out in the open, others will be really happy that you've, you've done what's essentially an icebreaker. You've done something a little bit silly or revealed some information about yourself that others could judge you on, but it opens up the conversation so everyone can be silly as well. Truly abundant guys completely understand this concept pretty much intuitively. We all know that, you know, if you're abundant with women, you know that women and people and ourselves, we're all very imperfect. We embarrass ourselves all the time. We regret a whole lot of things that we do. And so you really wear, you know, your personality on your sleeve. Everybody can see it all the time really quickly. So if you're, by the way, I take my sunglasses off on this Melbourne sunset. If you're the kind of person who is expressive and takes up space and is willing to make mistakes in your interactions, you're gonna be very, very quickly categorized as the kind of guy who is in, who is attractive. You've got personality, you would say. Those who are scared of making mistakes, they're kind of considered those who, are, who don't have personality. And you can't really banter with them, you can't call them out, you can't you know, wax lyrical and think poetically about amazing adventures because you know, if you share your embarrassing passions and desires, or if you share your guilty pleasures, you know, binge eating chocolate, wasting money, gambling, getting drunk with friends, these are, you know, human flaws, or they can be objectively considered as human flaws, and you can be challenged and called out. So the kind of people who are categorized as no personality are those who are very safe in their conversation. They don't, you know, they don't take any risks, versus those who have a lot of personality, who will very quickly bring up either you know, playful expressions or desires or confrontationalism or embarrassments. And you'll know that because they, they're not tense and reaction seeking and, and self-conscious. Uh, and they're not worried about validation seeking. They're not using game as a technique. They're just kind of like openly expressing, kind of subconsciously knowing or almost like consciously knowing that if you can openly express yourself, then that is going to you know, appeal to other people's emotional state there goes the sun going down it'll appeal to others emotional you know state of being and they'll latch onto that and want to join in the emotional communication as well so it's you know if you're out there and especially if you meet the kind of girls who really might make you nervous a girl who you feel is a little bit out of your league or the kind of girl who you do really want who you think would be you know more interesting to you than the average kind of chicks that you're already getting you need to kind of remind yourself right Go into martyrdom. I right? can like be willing to lose the interaction forever, and we all, we always say it. We always say it on the Forty Natural that if you're not going to get laid, you might as well have fun not getting laid. Okay, and you can have fun saying edgy things that you wouldn't normally say. That's probably going to make you giggle. So really, from the very beginning of the interaction, you want to be able to say, "I'm excited to drink tonight. My friends are out of control. I, I'm a liability." oh my God, you guys are amazing. If you can use those kind of big, colorful expressions early on, take up a bit of a space, be a little bit theatrical. And in, as far as like social conditioning goes and social formality, if you can be abnormal and against social formality. And just to, to paint a clear picture of that one, imagine like the British royal family, all dressed up, very polite, on ceremony, on parade. If you can 
you know, loosen up, take up space, be silly, be colorful, um, and be challenged on what you're saying, then you're falling into the category of the kind of guy who is fun and who has personality, all right? So, you know, I started by explaining that if you're willing to embarrass yourself and be imperfect, then you've got personality. You're a confident type of guy, you're an expressive type of guy, and the things that you say, both embarrassing or exciting, they are gonna draw engagement from the people that you speak to. But if you playing it safe and just speaking about facts and business and where you're from and searching for commonality and rapport based on, you know, a list of life experiences that you might have in common. You might even have, you know, you might have gone to the same kind of schools, gone to the same kind of churches, maybe you go on holidays in the same part of the world or whatever, and you may have all these commonalities together, but you actually won't even then have an emotional romantic connection because your conversation is gonna be a safe type conversation, a limited type conversation, and it's ultimately at the root cause of it, it's gonna mean that you don't have the courage to take risks to share your passions, which could be embarrassing, or your fears, or your discontentedness that you have with yourself. You drink too much, you spend too much, you're too obsessed with your body image, you go to the gym too much, um, you take yourself too seriously and you can't stand it. Those are embarrassments. And even if you imagine like a romantic movie where the the stereotypical librarian type character, she suddenly starts to have a drink and open up and the romance begins to flow. It's the classic story. And if you are indeed a high achieving academic beta male type guy, and all of a sudden, we're in the middle of a pathway, so we've got to be careful. And all of a sudden you start you know, sharing yourself more. It's a scary, thrilling, vulnerable experience, but you need to have your heart in the game in order to connect to other people's hearts. So today we've been out here in Melbourne speaking about the idea of the opposite of being perfect and macho and defensive about your personality and actually letting, you know, letting your embarrassments come through. And they can be passions or desires or silliness or making, letting yourself make mistakes. But that shows that you're so comfortable in so many environments that you're, you know, you're strong of character, that you're responsive, that you can deal with criticism or bullshit or we'll kind of rotate around here, um, deal with social pressure in a way that a weaker character person can't, okay? Because you're, you're super defensive, narrow-minded, and if you can have a colorful, silly, and broad conversation, that's gonna be emotional, and if it's emotional, then you're gonna be able to connect with people in a way that somebody who's got little personality or little character, they're not gonna be able to do that at all. But the problem is you need to have balls, right? And you need to endure fear and risk and criticism and social pressure but that's what makes you mad. It's gonna put you into a competitive space against other guys who might you know, challenge each other, call each other out. And that is gonna be the kind of thing that's gonna make you really, really attractive to chicks. And that's what I wanted to teach you here in this video. But I only learned that because of the, the really extreme case of my Serbian cultured student who was really, really like hesitant to, to show the weakness, to take risks or to, to draw criticism to himself. And it was a really, really good example for us, you know, in the Western world where we are kind of more forgiving of ourselves and forgiving of each other and we have more of a flamboyant, anything is okay society. Whereas if you think of Serbian culture, um, it's a lot more macho, it's a lot more like right wing, old school, uh, old fashioned, limited, limited thinking type of culture. And that difference really taught me a lot. And basically, if you can embarrass yourself, Okay, if you can relate on embarrassment, you're gonna connect really quickly, accelerate attraction, draw tests, and get onto the topics of intimacy, dating, hooking up, making out, going home together, and all those things that happen in modern day contemporary game. So this is Alex from The 40 Natural. We're doing our program here in Melbourne. As the sun literally goes down in both Federation Square and what's uh, Flinders Street Station over there, check out doing one of The 40 Naturals with me sometime in the future. This program, it's, it's really, really special. It's me, up to nine students in one of these cities around the world. Melbourne, Thailand, Sydney, Austin, Oslo, Amsterdam, Havar, Warsaw, London, New York, back to Melbourne. And you know, if you're watching this, you wanna get your dating life handled. You wanna take it seriously. You wanna you know, get more selection. You wanna be with a girl who you really, really like. You wanna prove things to yourself socially. You wanna learn to deal with social pressure. And that's all we focus on for 33 days. And it's, you know, if you wanna be good in the gym or if you, you know, you wanna be financially intelligent or if you wanna, you know, get in shape, 
you get a dietitian or a financial planner or you get a personal trainer and that's exactly what I do with you socially in reality in a way that you you can't do for yourself okay give you the guidance give you the coaching hold your hand when you're freaking out remind you that everything's going to be okay and give you the kind of insights in person that we could never publish on the internet in this politically correct reality that we live in now so really really nice speaking to you guys today hope you enjoy these videos and uh, you should check out the four week natural schedule and consider doing some real life training because you only live once and there is a way to, to master your, your personal development and your dating life, and that's with me live in person. It's a lot of fun, and uh, I love my job, and I look forward to continuing to do it here in Melbourne. Catch you later.